Okay, so walk around of my 2012 Citroen Relay camper van. From the outside, it's fitted, you can see on the top there, it's fitted with a 250 watt solar panel and uh, the Fiam wind deflector. There's a 500 mil skylight and there's a further 280 mil skylight with a fan over the bathroom area. All the tyres are really good. As you can see, they're almost new, tread-wise. I'll just walk you around the exterior so you can see there's the mains hookup down there. And the water, it has two tanks fitted underneath one for grey water and the other one for fresh water. It's got a tow bar fitted, I've never actually used that but what I have used it for is I fitted one of those external steps which makes getting in the back in and out a little easier. It's got the Citroen um, wheel caps, hub caps if you want to call them that. And there's mirror film fitted to the tops of the side windows and the top of the windscreen just to help keep the sun out of your eyes. The nice thing about this one, it's actually got the 3 litre turbo diesel engine as opposed to the 2.2. So it's got a bit more power. <coughs> and uh, will pull along quite nicely. Um, it doesn't really sacrifice anything on fuel consumption either. On a run you can get about 35 to the gallon out of it quite easy. It obviously drops around town. But it's reasonably economical to run. inside it's fitted with some leather seats that came from a BMW M5 the front's actually extend quite sure why you'd want that but there we go it also has um, an Android purpose-built stereo for these with a DVD CD player there are USB leads through to here, which you can plug flash drives into for videos or music or whatever it is you want to watch. Watch, it also has Bluetooth on it, satellite navigation. Um, it also takes SD cards and there's a GPS SD card in there as well. Um, that is all linked through to two amplifiers there's one down the back there which controls four speakers and there's one down the back there if you can see it that controls the subwoofer it's got a sony 12 inch sub which is fitted down here behind the seat there are two pioneer six by nines mounted in boxes underneath the seats and the speakers in the doors and the tweeters were upgraded to <laughs> Vi Black Series component system speakers. Um, it's got a good amount of volume and a really nice high quality sound. As I enjoy my tunes, so made sure that we had good sounds. Through to the back, there's a fire extinguisher there. We've got some coat hooks for hanging coats and a space to store shoes down the bottom. We have a sliding door that takes us through to the cab. 
trying to get back. It's a two-part door. I'll try to demonstrate this. I'm doing this one-handed, so you'll have to forgive me. It comes across and then slides down. And that shuts the cabin off from the rear for night time or if you just want some privacy. That just locks back. I have a bathroom in here. <clears throat> which is fully waterproof and fitted with a shower tray. However, I didn't fit a shower because um, I didn't really feel the need to it. I fitted a shower tray so you can have a good wash from the basin and let the wastewater go away. I just keep a mat in there most of the time. There's the shower outlet. Has a flush cassette toilet with the cassette exits to the outside. There is a small cupboard there and there's an under sink cupboard here where we keep toilet rolls and stuff. The sink is a proper ceramic sink and these taps heat the water as it passes through when you're plugged into on site on the mains. Takes the water from the tank and they've got a three kilowatt heater in here and it heats the water, you set the temperature and the flow here. There is actually a soap dispenser to go on here, which I took out just to rinse it out, but I've forgotten to put it back in, but it will be put back. And there's a light, and you've got the um, skylight roof there with the extractor fan. The kitchen area, we've got a two burner glass hob um, which works really well. You've got a sink with a small drainer. Again, another one of these taps with the heater in that heats the water as it comes through. Um, there's a soap dispenser. You've got tea and coffee and a little shelf here. I normally keep three mugs in there. There's just enough room for three mugs. You've got a towel dispenser here and a double socket for plugging in a kettle or coffee machine. There's a microwave up here which was brand new you've got a sensor here so you can tell how much power is being used and that's the battery voltage the table stores away here and there's a leg which is actually stored under the seats here which just plugs into there and then you've got a table for a seating area. This area here, there's a set of slats which are joined together like a ladder. You just clip that in there, put the two side cushions into the middle and the whole thing converts into a double bed. The bedding we keep un under here. And this can also be accessed from the rear because I've made it so these are drawers that come out the back. There are blinds to the rear windows. And these just pull down. Like so. There's small magnets in the bottom that clip them to the doors so they don't flop about. We've got a carbon monoxide alarm on here. The um, TV is a it's a 32 inch television which just show you that 32 inch TV which is connected through the stereo mounted above it and the two speakers um, the stereo is also Bluetooth and uh, it takes um, USB memory stick so you can put some music on there and play it back should you wish to The overhead cupboards have all got um, these pistons on so they open slowly and they're soft close. Um, we've got a TV aerial signal booster in here as well. And they press the little button there and they catch. Just 
nice some spare towels and things in there. And the same on this side. Here we've got um, double socket with USB charging for the phone. And there's also an auxiliary socket here, which is connected through to that stereo. So you can have your phone or laptop here plugged in um, if you don't want to use the Bluetooth. There are undercovered under lights. Which my camera's trying to show, which are quite nice in the night time. There are three ceiling lights down the center there. Each one is individually switched and the ceiling is um, it's UPVC with chrome strips. It's very easy to keep clean. On this side, we have a small wardrobe with hanging space. I left some clothes in there just to demonstrate it. Small shelf area at the top. And there's a further six drawers for storage here. On this side, we have the oven, which is there. A small fridge, which is quite adequate. There's a pull-out worktop here for some additional workspace. And cutlery and the usual paraphernalia that's needed. And these just lock. Stop them coming open while you're traveling. When the van was built, it was really well insulated and this is quite suitable for winter use. Um, there's over cub, overhead, over cab, sorry, storage here, which goes back quite a way. You can walk through into the cab area quite easily. Exit through either the rear doors, the front doors, the side doors. The front windows can be left open for ventilation. And you've also got the skylight here which has um, a fly screen and also a blind if I can pull it one time there we go and a blind to block it out at night oh there Gas cylinders are stored under here in a sealed cupboard. There's two of them. These can be um, exchanged at most color gas outlets. You can turn them on and off from in there as a valve. And there's also the ventilation hole going down through as required. Um, so if you were to have a leak, the gas goes to the outside of the van. This cupboard is all sealed, as you can see. If we go back around here to the electrics. As I said, we have a 250 watt solar panel and there's a solar charge controller. The batteries can also be charged from the mains using this 30 amp charger. It's a consumer unit for the 240 volt electrics. You can switch between battery or mains if you plug in um, to a, a main source, switch that over to mains and then the whole van runs on mains. There's a 3000 watt inverter sits down here which will run everything in the van um, with the exception of the hot water taps. It won't run those, it's just too much for them. There's a split charge relay here with a switch at the front so you can charge the leisure batteries while driving. You can choose between the van 
leisure both or off for the batteries there's 12 volts uh, fuse box here with blown indicators should you ever be unfortunate enough to blow a fuse um, a hundred uh, sorry the 300 amp fuse I think for the batteries to the inverter there are three 12 volt 115 amp per hour batteries connected via bus bars which sit beneath the fridge I've never actually um, exhausted these when I've been away um, even on a three-day stay they still have sufficient charge left in them and they're on constant charge from the solar panel so I've never had a problem with those. You can also charge the van battery from the solar panel by leaving this relay switched on with the switch at the front. Um, there's a, another fuse here which just fuses the 12 volt down from the, the 300. This is a common ground for all the ground cables and the, the cables are, are numbered there. switches here isolate the tap the water pump and this one here is for the fridge and the hob ignition there is a small collapsible stool which you can just take out and place down there and that enables getting in and out a little easier when you're done it simply hooks back onto there hooks here for towels or anything you want or towels there this also serves as a handrail for pulling yourself into the van um, if you're finding it a bit much as i said shoe storage down the bottom here i think that's covered about everything um The van has just been MOT'd um, that's, uh, a week ago actually, so it's got a year's MOT all by one week. Um, it went through, no advisories, no problems, all done. Starts on the button, runs great.